All right, hey guys, it's Tans here. I wanted to quick give you uh, kind of an overview of how SuperMemo takes care of its files. Um, so I'm going to show you what this looks like, and you may be worried because it says 1757 in the 1866 member file. What's going on there? These numbers probably should be equal. No worries. So what this is is whenever you create a note card or a note in SuperMemo, builds a text registry of it and the registry increases in number so like each addition to the registry which would be like a consolidation of text like this is the consolidation of all your text files in super memo and it creates a registry member for each one so what I have 18 I have what I actually have is 1757 of them um, but how it works is it'll create a new registry spot for all of them. Or as you create them, it creates a new registry spot. So let's say I make 1,866 of them, and then I go back and delete some. I still have, it still maintains this 1,866 because it keeps the location of them and it doesn't, but it'll go back. And then as you create more, like this number will get bigger and begin to reach this number and then they'll both grow together at the same rate like this one right here see it's, just, it's still lower but this one's the same I just made another you know or I have the same number of categories as I have members in the file like as I have ever created so that means it's full whereas like this one here or, or you know both of these all the other ones I've deleted some and then gone back and added to them. So like I probably at one point had 62. I had 95 at one point and then deleted them. And then now it's filling it back up. So it removes the spots and then goes back and fills them up. Um, Super Memo is extremely, it's a sophisticated program. Um, Windows is, is similarly sophisticated. People don't give it all the credit it deserves. But if I go into the uh, Super Memo file system here, so let's say uh, systems, Now let's go into elements. So I want to be able to find an element. And you think like you got all these numbers here, right? Why are these all like this? Uh, and why are different things and, and a different number of them in each one? So what Super Memo does is it tags uh, well, it doesn't tag it, but it, it puts them in order of like most used so that the more frequently used ones will pop up and are eat more easily accessible. On older computers this used to be necessary in order to um, you know, optimize it. It's not so necessary anymore because you know, I prefer being able to look and find where my files are but uh, you just have to trust that it's doing its job. Windows is very similar in that like you try to go into the uh, well the Windows registry is somewhat organized but I mean not really. You try to go into the Windows folder and let's go to like system or something system 32 and you'll see like this alphabetical stuff but then you go into some of them and it'll just be super weird and you won't understand it Let me find one. here's a bunch of DLLs like similar sophisticated they actually made uh, the Windows operating system with a uh, using how do I explain this? I can't even remember the name of it. But what they do is they make a model of what I'm not even going to explain it. You'd have to watch, you have to listen to, uh, I forget his name. This is the most worthless <laughs> video ever made. Uh, Ray Kurzweil. So Ray Kurzweil. Was friends with, or is kind of, they knows, knows the guy, uh, Dean Kamen, who made the uh, Segway. He's more famous because of the Segway, but Ray Kurzweil is a brilliant man. Um, kind of, they call him a futurist or whatever, but uh, he just recently got hired by Google. He invented the uh, speech recognition software, and his books, and like, I guess he, and uh, I subscribe to his. Uh, methodology of thinking and that I really want this kind of to happen because I don't want to lose my family members but uh, I love people and I want to live forever but uh, 
you, you would have to read it. They, uh, an intelligent, they, they made kind of an intelligent machine um, that is not fully intelligent, only partially like, uh, sounds ridiculous, I know, I'm just rambling on. Uh, so let's say you can make a bunch of nodes, and then with each node in this software logarithm, you assign a quality factor. And then you want it to achieve um, a, a final answer. Well, you go through and have it run the program in random ways. And then for each one that works the best, like the most efficient one, you increase the quality factor. So eventually you get nodes with ratings of which one has got a higher quality factor. And then it'll know to take that route. And that's the best way to do it. That's super oversimplified and not even exactly how it works, but that's kind of the idea that goes on by assigning um, well, quality factors to different points and data points and then allowing them to be what decides what goes into um, or how to make the system. Anyways, they designed Windows with a system similar to that where they basically, the computer designed it. So, anyways, it's interesting if you want to read up on it. Windows NT is what was done that way. Let me see if I can even forget it. I've talked enough about ridiculous stuff. But dude, Ray Kurzweil is interesting. If you want to read one of his books, I read The Age of Intel I read The Age of Spiritual Machines, this one. And then I also read uh, The Singularity is Near, which pretty cool. Um, this guy's pretty intelligent and goes into a lot of cool things like uh, what's, I thought I just saw the Turing machine on here. I mean, if you can just move one atom at a time and connect one atom to another atom, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. The two, oh, this is the Turing test. I must have gotten that incorrect. Some other kind of machine, but look, look at this. He believes the Turing test will pass by 2029, which is basically uh, a test to see if you have. Well, come on. Test to see if. Uh, your computer is an intelligent as a person. Um, I'm bringing it up here just so you can see it. So basically, you wouldn't be able to tell whether or not you are uh, speaking with a machine or a human being, and then you would know you basically have a uh, artificial intelligence there. Anyways, forget I said all that stuff, and uh, hopefully, and just know that Super Memo. You can't really look through these files and figure out um, what what is going on inside Super Memo. Um, just know that it's there, but and, and that each folder is assigned. Like you saw me just click on one like ten times, and these each have like different members and different numbers of members in them. They're all put there by um, the Super Memo controller or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's probably a way better name for it, but uh, yeah, you can also go into Super Memo. And let's say I want to go to. Info. Reports, and this is where your uh, like that report that you do when you repair your super memo. It's in there, and uh, there's another one in here somewhere. Is it? No, because I remember messing with it. I think it's one of these. No. You can control it from within. Maybe it's in here. Cause you can, what is this? I don't. It's weird, right? I didn't even know I had those there. I've been deleting some of my copies and this one is. Now this is all the report files right here. But there's a there's a way you can edit the uh, inside Super Memo. So if I open up Super Memo and I go to Options and Fonts, I can see uh, Style Sheet here. 
And there it is. Supermemo.css. Remember Supermemo? It's in the bin file. So I can go into the Supermemo folder. Here. There we go. And edit the CSS stuff like the layout for your HTML and you know what it's su and it, it is weird you can't like go back and rechange or you can you can go back and change old ones but it's just something about it doesn't work how I expected it to um, if somebody knows how to do this send me it's like you know send me a message and tell me how to how to make all these things exactly the same I want I, don't, I, don't, I want to use you know uh, specific fonts for different things like I really enjoy the uh, the new font for Windows 8 I think it looks great and uh, I kinda wanna just keep uh, put that in here but uh, I tried that and it ends up being a bunch of like some of them are the right fonts some of them are the right size some of them are small large it's just that you know it's a big mess and so I just kinda went back to the default and left it at that which is what I try to do with most of the super memo stuff, but you can edit and you'll see some of the stuff appear and some of the I don't know. I've tried to ask them. In fact, uh, if you go to super memo, let's go up here to the um, here questions and answers maybe. It's like bug. I think it's bugs actually. There's errors and bugs. And I got a couple questions on here. Um, so here, I'll probably have to look through that. You know, you don't have a bunch of time, and you know, you just you want to do. That's why I use Anki for a day based stuff. I don't have time to go ahead and look through this, and figure out all these problems, figure out how to do it. But uh, it really, the logarithm here is just so amazing. You have to, I have to use it for the long term memory. Uh, but yeah, it's in here somewhere. And there's other places. It's, this website is pretty well spread out. There's all kinds of places for uh, bugs. I don't. Anyways, I'll let you guys <laughs> fill me in on that. Sorry for the not very informative video, but uh. I like Super Memo. I like using it. It's just I wish it was written in uh, something else. Designed a little bit, just some little tweaks would make it pretty amazing. Um, if it was in C Sharp, you could use it on your Windows Phone, Windows. You could then convert it into C and use it on Android and whatever, whatever. You know, and I really want to do that. And it, w it wouldn't be too difficult to do, um, as Microsoft has basically released APIs that do a lot of the programming for you so anyways all right good luck guys and good luck studying